Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Ron Gerard. I'm from the Lemister Historical Commission, volunteer member and volunteer member for the uh, Lemister TV or LTV. Um, today I'd like to welcome my special guest, Karen Burns. Um, she's originally from Lemister and uh, her family owned uh, the McCoy family. McAvoy. Ma McAvoy family, thank you. Um, owned the theaters in Lemister at one time. We had five movie theaters in Lemister. She's going to talk a little bit about the uh, about her family history, and so I'm going to let her do the talking. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. let me talk. Okay, all right. So um, my great grandparents, Rosina and Thomas McAvoy, uh, had many en endeavors in their their time in Lemister. They first had a boarding house. They both worked at um, the Lemister Worcester Company, which was a company that right. uh, made men suiting. Um, I'm also learning things about my family that I didn't know. My great-grandmother, Rosina, was born in Plymouth, England. Okay. And somehow my great-grandfather went to Plymouth, England to visit. But I'm thinking now that he, there were some relatives already here in Lummis that okay. connected them up. But supposedly he went there to buy wool for the Worcester Company. He yep. met her. They fell in love. And about 18 years old, she left her family and came to America, okay. <laughs> which was kind of quite a, a big deal at those times. So they came here. They worked in the Worcester milling thing. Then they had a um, uh, boarding house on Elm Street. They had four children. Uh, Edward is the oldest, then Albert, Arthur, and then Rosina is my, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, I guess we, my great grandfather thought that getting into the movie business would be a good thing. He, they bought a theater, I think, from somebody named Mr. Wilkes, uh, which eventually they renamed The Pastime. And it was a silent movie theater, and they, the projectors were hand cranked in those days. And I guess that was quite successful, so they continued on. And eventually, they had a theater called The Olympic, which we have a picture of, which, and then the Gem Theater, uh, and then the Rialto, which was there, which build, the building still exists, it has four lives. Right. Was the Plymouth, the was the Rialto Theater, then it was the Lemister Recreation Center, then it was the YMCA, right, right. and now it is a church. Church, yes. So that's been around quite a while. Uh, along the way, they also bought a music hall, which was on uh, Mechanic Street, and had that as a movie theater, but then it burnt down in 1927. And according to newspaper articles, that before the ashes were cold, Mr. and Mrs. McAvoy decided to build the Plymouth Theater on the, the site. The Plymouth Theater was named after my great grandmother's hometown, Plymouth, England. Now, what about the, uh, we had a theater in Lemmis to call the Metropolitan. Did, did, they, okay. did your family own that, that theater? That was too? the one theater we didn't own, but I'm hearing there's a capital, which I had never yeah, heard there of. There was before. a capital. The yes. It's kind of interesting about the Metropolitan. The Metropolitan was originally owned by somebody named Mr. Traja, but somehow the Latches family became the owners of the theater. Okay. And James and Peter Latches, twins, were in my class at school. I went to elementary school with them at field school from the first to the sixth grade. They lived on Orchard Street. We do have a picture. My great-grandmother was honored uh, by the movie industry as one, the oldest movie exhibitor in New England back uh -huh. in 19, it was 1951. I was in the second grade, beginning of the second grade. And uh, the, the, we have a photograph of her receiving an orchid corsage from Alfred Hitchcock okay. on the steps of City Hall. And Mrs. Latches is also in that picture representing we have the Rialto. That photograph. Represent, I'll be putting it up yeah, in a little bit. Yeah, representing the, um, the Metropolitan Theater. So okay. we, that was the only theater we didn't own, but we had friendly relationships with the Latches family. And I can remember one time, the, the, the Plymouth Theater got movies from certain companies and the Metropolitan got other ones. And okay. it was no, there was a movie that my great-grandmother wanted to see called The Greatest Story Ever Told. Okay. And she, it was only at the Metropolitan. Right, and right. I went with her to the Metropolitan Theater. She walked, we walked down Main Street with her cane, and we were let in free because she was Mrs. McAvoy. Did you, did you ever go to the movie theater when the Rialto was open? Well, the Rialto uh, closed when I was five years old, but I do have an intimate relationship with it because my grandparents and my great-grandmother lived in an apartment above the theater. Okay. So when my mother got married, my parents sold their house on Winter Street and moved in with Nana. So I call her Nana. So, you know, my early childhood, because my grandmother took care of me quite often, I spent a lot of time in that apartment. Okay. A lot of, a lot of people don't know this. Um, the Rialto Theater, the photographs that you sent me, it was an elegant movie theater. Oh, yeah, it was. It was very fabulous. And they, from what I was reading, they had a uh, goldfish tank. Yep, they did. Goldfish. And in front of the goldfish, they had a uh, 
statue, statue of Huckleberry, of Huckleberry Finn. Finn. Yeah, they did. And um, the seating capacity was like for 1,400 people. And uh, the seating was made of uh, all leather. They had sh mo uh, chandeliers hanging in the theater. It was quite a thing they to see. They also had the Robert Morton organ, which was yeah, a very yeah, large yeah, organ. Yeah, and from, from what I understand, from what I've been reading, um, a lot of celebrities, big name celebrities like Rudy Valentino, uh, 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 Mickey Rooney, uh, they, they all came into Lemister to, to go to that theater because in, 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 in Lemister we had the, uh, it was called the movie capital of Worcester County. Really? You know, you know and these are all some of the things I've been finding about our, 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 so our, our movie industry. So to me, find and, and I've been things. finding it fascinating. Now, when you were talking about the Capitol Theater, mm -hmm. which I know nothing I'm not, about, I'm not the Capitol, but the Olympic, Olympic. Theater. Because yeah. um, I, uh, there, there were, it was, yeah. it was from the Perils of Pauline. Right? Yes, yeah. the star, stars of like that, uh, she came to the Olympics. Rin Tin Tin, and mm -hmm. I, I remember by reading your book report, um, Rin Tin Tin is a uh, uh, pearl. Uh, so it was a, uh, well, it was the Pearl, Pearl White and some yeah, other, some right, other exactly. famous movie stars yeah. came into Lemons mm -hmm. to, to promote, to help yeah. promote the movie theater. And uh, tell me about your book report there. Yeah, it was pretty interesting, the story <laughs> you told me about that. Okay, well, there's two, two things that I've written. Back when I was in the eighth grade at Gallagher Junior High School, we all had to do a history project. And uh, my teacher, Mrs. Coughlin, uh, let me do one on the movie industry. Everybody else was doing the Revolutionary War, but I went to the library and went into the stacks and read all these old newspapers. My great grandmother died in 1955, so she had only been gone three years, and I wanted to know the you know the history of my family. So that's how it kind of got me started. And I'm in Lummis High School class of 1962, and we since our 50th reunion, we've had a newsletter. Mm -hmm. I have to give Pat McGee a uh, gendering credit for that. She's done a great job doing it, but she keeps getting different classmates to write things. And she oh, wow. egged me on enough, said, you know, you need to write about the movies. <laughs> so this this report here, it was one I just wrote last year. Uh, it's, you know, written a much, a much older person, but it does have more, reflects more things on, on my family and, and oh, stuff. Wow. So I, I, when you wrote that and sent it to me, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I learned a lot about our movie theaters. And through all our social media posts on Facebook, I've been getting a lot of positive response from everybody that's been, been connecting people to other people that they hadn't talked to in years. And that's the whole point behind all this, by posting simple uh, photographs and video. And, and, and uh, I'll give you, a, for instance, this morning, my aunt, she text messaged me. And somebody she hadn't talked to in almost 60 years through one of my our Facebook posts, they, they, they found each other. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. You know, yeah, Facebook has helped me connect with things. In fact, uh, of the 24 great-grandchildren, my brother and I were really the only two that you know, were around when my great-grandmother was alive and went to the movies and stuff like that. But there are a couple of my cousins who were born and raised here that I didn't ever know. And I've through Facebook, I've gotten connected with Janice McAvoy, who right, was right, right. my cousin Billy's, Billy's daughter. So it's been very, very cool. But uh, my whole family is intertwined with the movies. And my you know, early childhood, it was, well, it was a great thing to grow up in Lummister. Oh, yeah. And your grandfather owned the movie theater. I mean, oh, yeah. I. I once tried to pay, be a regular person to go to the movies with paying. Oh, wow. I lived, we lived on Pleasant Street, and an older girl took all the little kids from our little area, and, and I, it was 14 cents. And I was, you know, I was going on incognito with not a family right, member, right, right. and I went up to the ticket, well, I wanted to say 114, which is what you said to get your ticket. And the ticket lady, Sue Martin, said, Karen, you can't buy a ticket. You just go in the door. I, so, I, <laughs> some of the other photographs that you sent me, I. When I superimposed them into Photoshop, I, I was seeing like five cents for a show, ten cents mm -hmm. for a show. Yeah. No, they were pretty cheap back now, then. You know, what killed the movie theater was um, back the in the television. 30s, we had the Great Depression, mm -hmm. and a lot of people couldn't afford to go to the movie theaters. So what they would do is they would buy a radio, and they would sit down and listen to their entertainment on the radio. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of like killed the movie theater. Is, well, it, not so it, much it, in, the th in the 30s. The, the movie theaters kind of helped because they used to um, give dishes away and different things. Yeah, they I had saw that. You... Promotion. So we we were pretty we were going pretty strong until the early 60s. The Plymouth closed in 62, and I blame that on television. Yeah, yeah, but in I, television. You know, my relationship with the P Plymouth Theater is, you know, I, I, I was at the Rialto, but it was more like it was in the apartment. I was allowed to come down the stairs, and I think I wrote about that. Uh, yeah. I would sit on the stairs after, you know, Chris would be there for Sunday dinner, and. Um, I would sit on the stairs, my grandfather would bring me a napkin full of popcorn, and I'd watch the people come into I, the theater. I can remember one of the photographs that you had sent me. Um, it actually had guys 
raffling off radios. Yep. And they, you had like was... about 12 radios and mm -hmm. a guy standing out there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I was a kid growing up, I went to the Plymouth Theater. I don't remember Metropolitan, but I'm sure I must have went. And they used to raffle off bikes and stuff oh, like yeah. that. And, just and, to, and there was all yeah. kinds of kiddie events that they would have. And uh, in the summertime, it was on Wednesday. And in the wintertime, it was on Saturday. And in fact, they had... You know, they had they, for the adults. They would have they give away money at night, and they usually be your ticket, or they'd have special raffle tickets. But one time they were giving kids gifts because I didn't have a ticket because I didn't have to pay to get in. But they were going to give away the tickets, the things. And I was just kind of standing in the back of the theater, and some mother and the child were leaving, and the mother just said, "You take this ticket." Oh wow! wow. <laughs> and my grandfather's up on the stage. He called out my number. Wow! And I won a scooter, which was kind of cool. Uh, and the interesting thing about this, all right, so I'm ready to go home with my friends, walking home, which we'd walk to the theater. My uncle Arthur, who was one of the, the children of Frozine and Thomas, was the projectionist. Okay. And he saw me going down the street with my scooter. He offered to take the scooter to my house, but he didn't offer me a ride wow. home. Wow, wow. <laughs> so I kind of remember that. But uh, starting, well, when I was born, my father, grandfather's um, sister, Pauline Yeager Kirkpatrick, uh, lived in Iowa. And she was a nurse. And my grandmother thought it would be nice to invite her to come and help my mother with the new baby. Okay. So she was invited to come, but she stayed till I was eight years old. Oh, wow. And she was a nurse in Iowa, but her license wasn't valid in Massachusetts. So she became the candy counter lady at the Plymouth Theater. Okay. So that's one of the reasons that I spent from very young, I was allowed to hang out at the candy counter because my aunt was the one who was, was running. And I can remember standing on a chair and selling a candy bar to my uncle Arthur as he was on his way up right, to the, right, the booth to, right, uh, right. to run, the, run the movie. So then, you know, I, I was always there, and then, because uh, I knew the candy counter well, so when I was about 11 or 12, I started to actually work there under the, t I actually didn't get paid at first, it was a volunteer. Oh, wow. High school girls ran the counter, but on real busy times they needed extra help, so I was taken there to, to assist. And eventually I did work there, and I worked there the last night that theater was open. 1962, June 62, and it was a Jerry Burke uh, dance recital. It was the very last activity that we ever had. Was under that the, the dance studio, Columbia. Jerry Burke? She, oh, she, her studio was across the street on Mechanic Street, but she held her recitals. Oh, okay. Because uh, funny you should say that, because through a collection we had got from a family collection of photographs and negatives, I came across a lot of Jerry Burke's photographs that my uncle had taken, mm -hmm. and I just recently started posting them on social media. And a lot of people were starting to recognize who these kids were back then. And, and, and that's what I said about social media and putting this stuff on, on, on Facebook. And it's, it's connecting a lot of people it's, it's to really these fun. images. Everybody's it's really fun. It's fun, and I enjoy my post, and I'm glad to be a part of it, you know. And, uh, no, you've I, got a lot of people excited and interested, because I, I went to my 55th Lemons to High School reunion this oh, past wow. fall, okay. and Elaine Frankel was there, yeah. she's Elaine Dribben now, and I told her about you know, the Lemons to website, I said, Yo, you need to get on there, because her parents owned Frankel's store. We're still waiting to see a picture of Frankel's store for Elaine, oh, but, she's, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, but I, she's on there, and she's really enjoying seeing I think the seeing society, the I'm pretty sure the society has some, uh, we, we might even mm -hmm. have some at the Historical Commission, but... Um, I'm going to try to find some of them because I've had a number of people ask me about that store and, uh, and I've been really enjoying posting all these videos and photographs that we've been posting. We've been getting a lot of views and it's been all positive. Yeah. And, uh, I just, I've been, and uh, the reason why I asked you about all this stuff was because I, uh, I wanted to do a documentary on uh, movie theaters in Lemister. Now, even though those theaters aren't there anymore, what I'm going to do is when the weather warms up in the springtime is I'm going to videotape all those areas. The locations. Well, you still, gonna, we still have the Rialto. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> and, and I'm going to show people what they, what they are now. And what I've been hoping for, if anybody has any old 8 millimeter footage, that they might remember that uh, a parade going by or something like that that might have a background of the movie theaters. Mm -hmm. and we would <clears> gladly <throat> accept it. And I'm uh, and, uh, putting that in between where the empty lot is now and, and just putting putting it up in a, in a documentary and explain to people what happened to the movie theaters when they got built, the years when they closed, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the different shows that were shown at the movie theaters at the time. We had one that you had gave me a nice photograph of the Riello and mm -hmm. it had a nice uh, neon <laughs> sign up top of it and mm -hmm. Casablanca from the 1930s. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a really cool photograph and uh, We've had other photographs like that where uh, um, um, 
from the Plymouth Theater for, from uh, different uh, yeah, we've, Roy Rogers stuff like that. We've seen a couple in the front of the Plymouth, which I hadn't yeah. seen before. But the Rialto, there was an architectural drawing for that theater because my great parents had that theater built from the ground up. Right, and right. The, that uh, architectural drawing hung in the office of the Plymouth Theater. And when the Plymouth Theater closed, my grandfather gave that to my mother. And it hung in our house until okay. after my mother passed away. And my dad said, we should give this to the Lemons to Historical Society, which is, it's there now. I so. think I remember reading that. Um, yeah. when they so built that's why there's a really nice picture we have of the Rialto, which is the architect's drawing. When, when they built that theater there, didn't it like cost them like $200,000 uh, yeah. to build that? Yeah, that, yeah, that, was that was a lot was of money back then. That, that was. So they had been very successful. They said if they hadn't been built, I'm glad they built the Plymouth because you know, I spent my childhood at the right. Plymouth. That was my babysitter. We were there right, right. for you know, all the time. It was a very cool place. I have one cool story about the Plymouth Theater. Back, it was either 1953 or 1954, with the hurricane. I think it was Hurricane Gloria uh -huh. uh, happened, and it was I think it was August when that occurred. And uh, we always went to the theater, you know, like a half an hour before. My mother was going to be working at the ticket booth that day, so my brother and I, and Ray Butterfield, who was the assistant manager, and his two children and another friend of, of theirs, were five kids at the theater, and the, the weather was getting really bad. So they decided we could not open the theater, but it was was the kiddies day and they always had these cereals that they showed and it was that we wanted to see the next episode so my grandfather had them play the cereal for us five kids in the movie theater all alone while this horrible storm is going outside and then afterwards right, we right. went home and Ray Bettefeld drove us home and you know, I don't know how we got home the windshield wipe was we didn't even you know, do a dent to the water that was oh, coming wow. down. So I got to I got to watch the next episode of a serial during a hurricane wow. in, the, in the Plymouth Theater. Well, it's funny you mentioned the Plymouth Theater because I was telling Kyle this um, when I was a kid growing up. I forgot what I did bad, but I, anyways, I ran away from home. But I I ran into the, I didn't run into the theater, but I went into the Plymouth Theater, and I sat there all day till about eight o'clock at night time. And my father came in about eight o'clock looking for me. I don't think I seen the light of another the movie theater. So, that summer, you know, but uh, it was just funny, you know, you know, uh, just from was the a place photographs and posts that we, you yeah. know. So we all have great, you know, bringing back everybody childhood has memories, memories yeah, of the yeah. Plymouth Theater, because, uh, yeah. you know, that's pretty much where everybody went, and he did oh, have yeah. things for kids and special shows, and he catered to that. But, I mean, I got, I got to go in the side door. People would be lined up out the front door. I went down the alley, we'd rattle the door, and they'd come and let us in. What, do, do you remember, um... I, I can remember when I was a kid going to the movie theaters. People used to try to sneak into the movie theaters from the from the yeah, side doors. Yeah, there were some doors on the side. They probably did. We had ushers. That was some of their jobs to you know, try to keep the people from sneaking in. And Robert Cormier, who was a uh -huh. famous Lemons author, he used to write for the um, uh, the Sentinel under the name of John Ditch the Fourth. I don't think I've sent you that article yet. Okay. But he wrote this article of Remin he and his mother used to come to the movies a lot. This was according okay. to my mother. She told me that. Uh, and he wrote this really nice nostalgic article about going to the Plymouth Theater and mentioning my grandfather, Bill Yeager, which uh, oh, wow. made my mother very happy. She, cause my grandfather had passed away at that time. And she actually wrote a thank you note to uh, uh, Robert Cormier for, oh, wow. for mentioning her father. But I recently found that article. And it's, it's very cool. So. Wow. Well, I, I, I've been really enjoying uh, talking to you. I just... Uh, I've been learning a lot about our city and our history, mm. and uh, this and is it a helps cool, me, cool and, yeah, city. I'm and, glad and, I grew up here. And it helps me to become a better historian, learning mm -hmm. about it. I didn't really start getting involved with this for about, to about a couple of years ago, mm. and uh, I, I had made contact with the historical commission, and uh, actually the mayor Mazzarella Dean. Um, he said, "Why don't you get a hold of those guys? See, because he, he know he knew how to do video editing and all that stuff." And uh, I asked them if they could use an extra hand, and I've been there with them ever since. And I, and I thoroughly enjoy what I do and uh, talking to people and, and you, meeting yeah. people. And it's very interesting learning yeah, about it. Is. And your, all your, your posts that you put. I mean, you, uh, now we're friends. So it's, never, so this now is the first time I've met we're you. Friends. So I, I strongly encourage people on Facebook, <laughs> if they have any old prints or anything like that, to put put them up because you never mm -hmm. know who, yeah. who, who you might connect with from the past. I've I put putting stuff up on Facebook, and I had a guy call me up from California. Thanking me because he made contact with a friend he had I talked to him in almost 60 years, mm -hmm. and that was quite a thing when he called me up, just thanking me for that. You know, there's another guy, Rocky, who works with you. Yeah, the, Rocky you know, Palmero. Because he posted a picture that was, was taken by Henry Saints here, and it was a whole bunch of kids dressed up in these old-fashioned outfits. I was one of the kids. Oh wow! <laughs> and I, I remember the event was uh, the library had some kind of anniversary, and they got us to dress up in these old things to show the different costumes of the years that, you know. 
that the library been in existence. And uh, I'm in the, but I, the costume I was wearing is a, a flapper's 1920 dress, uh -huh. which I found up backstage of the Plymouth Theater. Okay. I was, wow. My grandfather's cleaning the theater. I don't know why he was had us kids there, but we were there. He was cleaning, and we were up running around backstage. And I found this trunk. And in the trunk was this flapper dress. Christy was kind of angry that I had opened this trunk, but it had been there for years and years. Eventually, he let me take it home, and that costume I wore at that library uh, activity, and you guys posted the picture. And then there was another one of the ladies, something at St. Leo's Church, and there was my grandmother standing right in the front row, which oh, was wow. very cool. Now, the, when you're talking about the Plymouth Theater, the Real Theater, were you fortunate enough or lucky enough to actually take anything from it, like a seat, a seat or something like that, an uh, artifact no. from the theater? No, we didn't. All I have is the um, architectural drawing of the Rialto Theater. Yeah, the, the, was, blue, the blueprint, right? Yeah. yeah, the, yeah well, it's I, not a blueprint. Yeah. It's an actual colored drawing. Uh, it's, because I, I, I went online and I found a blueprint of the actual theater. Oh, itself, well, I, I went, haven't got that. But this is the actual, the architect's drawing with, you know, old-fashioned cars, and it's oh, wow. been colored in. And I actually had a copy of it made before we donated. So I have a little one about this big okay. in my house, so okay. I can... I, I found it interesting it. too when like when Alfred Hitchcock came into Lemister mm -hmm. and, and gave you. Yeah. you, you I was actually there. there when that happened. Wow. Oh wow! So you <laughs> so remember that? So I can tell you that story too. All right, I was in the beginning of the second grade. I went to Field School, which is right. the Lemister Historic Center, right next to City Hall. We lived on Grove Avenue. So it was a Saturday. It was early fall, and it was a beautiful day. And I don't know where my brother or my father were, but my mother said, you know, I want you to walk down to the City Hall. I have to go get Nana and Grammy. Why she didn't take me with her, why I went by my, but you know where, the, where it is that you go oh, to school yeah. there. Oh, yeah. I walked every day. So all by myself, I walked down to the city hall, walked up all the stairs in the front. Nobody there. It was just a beautiful day. I go in, we went into, to come to the mayor's office. And the mayor's office was Mayor Crossman, my great grandmother, Rosine, and my grandmother, Rosine, and my mother. And then the, we were just there, and I, they were happy to see me, little seven-year-old kid. And then, like 15 minutes later, all hell broke loose. <laughs> the, these people came in convertibles, and there was this big crowd. I think the high school band was playing, and uh, uh, they would get Nana out onto the. She, she had bad arthritis. She had a cane. She couldn't stand up long. So they. How was she going to get out there? They put a chair for the mayor's office. She sat in the chair with her cane, and then all of a sudden there's Alfred Hitchcock and oh, wow. uh, Dorothy Lamour and all these people. I was, they didn't let us come out into the, if I'd known that picture was going to appear often, I would have been out there helping her hold her cane. Oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but I was standing in the doorway right behind Dorothy Lamour. Oh, wow. And in the picture that we have, you can see the top of, I was, my grandmother's hat, you can see the top of her hat, because I was only seven, so I was going to lose. I, so think, I, I was, think we have other pictures of her, too, as well, you know, from, from, from what but, I saw in our archives. But I, you know, I can't prove I was there, but that's the story as I remember it, and, you know, and all these old people people were out there and Nana was getting an orchid corsage and for being the oldest you know movie ex exhibitor in New England so oh, it was wow. kind of cool so I was actually present for that uh, particular momentous day and that photograph every 10 years or so shows up in some local newspaper oh wow well what, what, what else can you tell me what else you remember about, about about anything and about the theaters that you okay well about I, what were your favorite movies could growing up and oh because oh, I used to get, oh let's tell you a story about my brother um, we used to get this you know I saw some movies over and over again but my mother was the um, backup a cashier yep. that sold the tickets so she worked every Friday and then when Sue Martin who was the head one uh, went on vacation my grandmother took over and my brother was still preschool and was so went on a vacation for a week so my mother had to go every day the afternoon but the tickets only stayed open till like three o'clock or something and then she would go home so she brought my brother the, the, they would have the co-feature the co-feature that week was hot rod girl okay and he saw the first half of hot rod girl five times <laughs> and he never saw the end of it because you know, it was time to go home right, right. Uh, when he was about 19 years old he got a job in california for the summer through my father's connections to foster grant and he was there by himself, and he walked down the street, and there was an old movie house, and they were showing Hot Rod Girl. And he went in and saw the rest of the show that okay, he hadn't been so able to see when he was a, a priest. So now he, now he probably sat there and watched the show five times to the end of it just to see it. <laughs> see, because he knew so what the whole, the so whole, yeah, the whole thing was. But, uh, yeah. but we did you know, get to watch you know, some of the movies many times. And when I worked at the candy counter, there was a little trap door in, in the back room of the candy counter which you could open, and you could see into the theater. So sometimes we weren't too busy. I could sneak back and uh, get a look of what the movie was, even though it was working. Oh wow! And the the, Ralph, the Plymouth Theater was also the outside. It didn't look that great, but the inside was absolutely quite beautiful. It had a marble floor that was circular with all different designs, and there was a chandelier. 
And one of my jobs when I worked at the Candy Con was if people would spill popcorn and stuff. I had, to, I had this little carpet sweeper kind of thing, and I would go out and and right. uh, sweep that floor. And I always went in circles because I followed the pattern of the floor. Okay. So and was, another thing I can remember about the Plymouth Theater was um, on a Halloween weekend or something like that, I was sitting in the theater with my sister, and I can remember some kids dressed up in a scary costume coming out trying to scare all the kids in the uh, try, trying to scare all the kids in the. Uh, in the, um, in, in, in the audience, yeah. you, you know, yeah. and, and that Ooh, kind no, of thing. They did all kinds of things. They also had uh, uh, Howdy Doody was a big show. Yeah. Well, yeah. Buffalo, it wasn't Buffalo Bob, it was his brother, Buffalo Vic, came, to the, oh, came wow. to the, and also Clarabelle came. Clarabelle the Clown. Clarabelle the Clown. Okay, okay. And I got to see Clarabelle the Clown without his, his costume. Oh, wow. And Buffalo Vic bought me a root beer. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> so it's, I was it's, the, it's funny. It's the funny the, grandchild. Uh, <laughs> it's funny the memories that these theaters bring back people yeah. from, like I said, it, a lot of these Facebook posts that we've been posting, um, they've been connecting people with other people, and it brings mm -hmm. back a lot of good memories, I hope, for people that really enjoy the, the, uh, the posts that the uh, Lemus Historical Commission and the Lemus uh, Historical Society that's been posting on Facebook to, to, to try to help people that connect with the past and to preserve it for the future generations because once our generation is gone, nobody can talk about that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I volunteer with people that are elderly, and uh, I don't want to reveal their ages and whatever, but... But those memories, they can I remember those things and I not the new things. I can't get knowledge from somebody that's 20 years old, what they know. They know a lot of stuff from Lemus's past, and they're bringing me up to speed on, in, on everything about Lemus that they know. And, and, and we digitally record it on paper in, in the video files so that other people can enjoy it. Because once we're gone, our That's history right. is gone. Yeah. So the whole idea behind doing all this is to preserve our, our Lemus's history, which is, I think is important. And, and, it, and it, like I said, it connects people with other people, and it makes people feel good, yeah. you know? Well, I kind of feel like I'm the keeper of the flame of the McAvoy family. Okay. I, mean, I don't have the name McAvoy because I'm from the lady side of the family, but uh, I'm, you know, the one that knows me. I, the cousins that I have met recently that I, do have the name McAvoy uh, had, had didn't know about their family. I've been helping to let them find out about what we, okay. what the family did way back when and all the movie theaters. It's a nice, rich family history, and I'm okay. kind of proud of it. Oh, wow, good. Well, um, I don't, do you have anything else you want to say before we close it up? Or? Okay, well, we've done, we, we could probably talk for hours, but uh, I would say we probably kind of kind of covered it. Uh, so my grandparents met at the, I believe it was the Gem Theater. My grandfather was in World War II. He was from Iowa. He was sent to Fort Devens, came to the movies in Lummiston, met my grandmother. They fell in love. They were married like four months after oh, they wow. met. So. Wow. So that's kind of a now, cool Now, do you have story. any photos of them that you eventually uh, share with oh, me? Oh, yeah, I think I, I, maybe, I have their wedding pictures. Okay. Maybe we'll um, put something I'm, like that yeah, up to show yeah, the people. I, yeah, I do have lots. Uh, lots. Okay. I have a whole, I, when, after we're off the air, I'll show All you right. some of the ones I have on my iPad, and if you want me to yeah, send them maybe to you, one, I can. Maybe one or two would yeah, be great. Right, because, you know? I mean, I, I have hundreds of them. But All right. you know, I enjoy looking at them. They, but some of them, I didn't even know who they were, but through some of these other relatives I'm finding, right. I'm able to identify some pictures that I hadn't done before. So it's, it is fun delving into the past. And uh, okay. of course, when it's your own family, it's right, you know, right. kind of cool, too. Well, I want to thank you again for coming in today, because I know you had quite a ride in from Natick. How was the travel coming in this morning? Today wasn't bad. Too it was bad. nice and sunny. And uh, I do I come back roads when I come to London. And today, so today with the, the warm there. temperature outside, yeah. it feels like a heat wave, well, actually, compared to what we've been getting. Well, it felt good to get out of the getting. house after these, these terrible yeah, days yeah, that yeah. we've had. Yeah, plus, I, I know a lot of people haven't been feeling good. They've been sick, so, mm -hmm. so I'm glad you were able to make it out today and come into Lemus during the, let me do a nice interview with you today. And once again, my name is Ron Gerard from the Lemus Historical Commission and from Lemus TV. I'd like to thank Kyle Pemmerini and Jack Sally and the Lemus TV family for letting us come in today and doing an interview with you guys. And uh, hopefully this will be the first of many interviews down the road for me personally. But uh, I'd like to thank Karen Burns again for coming in today. And, uh, you know, like they say, enjoy your day and thank you very much.